Thank you for joining us. It is Friday night, December 9th, 2011. This is going to be another extended, very important edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Lord Christopher Moncton, Mark Moreno are in Durban, South Africa, and they have told us the interviews are coming up, but this is the most draconian UN genocidal operation, eugenics operation that they have ever seen. Those interviews are coming up. We also have a report on John Corzine. That's coming up. But I do want to talk about the gravity of what we face here. It is because of you, the viewers of InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv, that we're even here. If it wasn't you out there who love liberty resonating with our message, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If it wasn't for the crew in there and the work they do, we wouldn't be here. Every day I pinch myself at what's happening in our world, and I pinch myself again that I am at the very forefront with you in the fight against these tyrants. It is an incredible, incredible responsibility. <laughs> Truth is stranger than fiction, and we're here right now. The fight against good and evil, it's real. Let's go ahead and get into the news this evening. First article. Obama administration launches major anti-terror propaganda offensive. And I was reading their actual press release today, and it says Al-Qaeda is no longer the threat. It's domestic groups and extremism, which is political speech. And in the manuals, if you don't like the Federal Reserve or carbon taxes, you are a terrorist. Protesting, left, right, whatever you are. Native American group, a conservative, liberal, whatever it is, you're a terrorist. No, the government putting down stuff like this on paper is the terrorist. And you are the un-American trash. The same people that ship guns into Mexico to kill thousands and hundreds on our side of the border to blame the Second Amendment. You are convicted, you are admitted criminals. Period. People are like, well, I'll vote Republican. They're bought and paid for too. This political class, the two twin parties, the, the two-party dictatorship is a fraud. And reading that AP article and others today, it, it just blew me away how brazen it was. I mean, they are shifting gears for this whole police state grid on the American people. And that's not really a surprise. Because we've now learned that not only did the um, Halliburton and KBR, Kellogg, Brown, and Root, put out three days ago an internal memorandum trying to hire subcontractors to be on a 72-hour notice on a paid contract to stand by to man civil disobedience camps all over the United States. Now hiding in plain view, we have an Infowars.com article that links to the Business Insider article. Army post job for internment specialists following KBR call for FEMA camp subcontractors. Now, we've reported old calls for this. This is a new one specifically for the military to hire a bunch of state, county, and federal prison guards to man this situation. You can read the article at Business Insider and also at Infowars.com. Quote, every soldier that enlists in the Army chooses a military occupational specialty, MOS, writes Robert Johnson, designed by a number and a letter and designated the 3-1-E MOS now includes advanced responsibilities, including command and control of prisoner of war and civilian internee camps. Civilian internee camps, which they passed a law last week, NDAA, saying the military can operate in America and indefinitely detain you and nobody knows where you went. Where'd Alex go? Where'd Marcos go? Where'd, where'd Bob go? Wes go? Where'd, where'd Rob go? Where'd John go? We don't know, just like in every other third world dictatorship, because a bunch of criminals took over and decided to rob everything, like Corzine. And if the military bends over for it, the police bend over for it, it means civil war. The bankers set offshore and laugh and roast marshmallows on our flames. Let's just not show up for this party, okay? Let's be a little smarter than uh, they think we are. Big story at Infowars.com. Huge story at Infowars.com. Let's get it out to everybody. Now, shifting gears into another Homeland Security police state action, every two or three days, I see an article in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, or CNET News, 300 domain names, 5,000 domain names, 100 domain names. It's always different. 
grabbed. And they'll grab whole internet companies, tens of thousands of sites sometimes, and just grab all the servers because they found one downloaded song that was illegal or uncivil on a website. And uh, here's the report. DHS shut down blog for a year on false pretenses. Homeland Security is seizing websites for copyright infringement with no evidence, no judge, no jury, no nothing. And a chilling illustration of how far the internet censorship has advanced, the Department of Homeland Security seized a popular music blog and shut down the website for a year on charges it now admits were completely false. Turns out there were four songs on this website being visited over a million times a day of alternative grassroots music, hip hop, rock and roll country. And the site's listed on our article. And the DOJ now admits this. And big record companies got mad that alternative groups were able to put their music out and make it popular. So they just said, doesn't matter if they have signed contracts with four of our sub-labels for four songs, which it turned out they had agreements to play it. They just seized it for a year, bankrupted them. <laughs> That's big music industry keeping a stranglehold on all this other music you're never going to get to hear because they make sure you don't. If Elvis came along today or uh, Led Zeppelin, you'd never hear them. That's why music's so cruddy. They go with what a few companies want, and that's it. It's another dark age, just like they're shutting down power plants, just like they're shutting down new engine factories and new technology companies. It's called disruptive technology. I have a family member who develops new drugs, and they came up with an ancient medicinal that totally clots blood flow and cuts, and they were told, this is a disruptive technology. We're not going to let this come to market. That's what we deal with here. Whether it's music, technology, art, doesn't matter. Only the insiders and their dirtbag kids and people get to have stuff seen by the public. Just like it was in Soviet Russia or Nazi Germany. You didn't get to have your play go out to the public or your music go out unless your wife got down and performed fellatio on the Nazi officer over that or the Soviet officer. And that's the opposite of freedom and that's what I declare war on here today. A bunch of control freak bastards controlling our lives. I'm sorry, it's a family show, but that's what they are. They are not from humanity. They were born of corruption, not of this species, and I'm sick of them. Bunch of control freaks. So there's that article. Continuing, House Republicans look to strip the TSA screeners of their officer title, which is finally a move in the right direction. You know, the FBI can't go to a park and randomly grab your wife's genitals or your son's genitals or your genitals. And they're, they're under supposedly the Bill of Rights Constitution. They can't do that. So how did they create 10 years ago a federal agency that takes control, sticks their hands down your pants, puts you in microwave ovens, and churn off the former head of Homeland Security makes money off of it? How do they do that? They just announced this. And Congress is pointing out, along with law enforcement and constitutional scholars, that this is like handing out badges to just people on the street and saying, you're now cops. They're not even having badges. And they're saying, you're not going to have 10 badges anymore. You're not going to have uh, this name officer. You're not a sworn. You know, when a cop has to go sign up and pay money to be bonded to be a peace officer, doesn't mean they're perfect either, but it's a big deal. You're now swearing to the people, I'm going to uphold this. And you got to put money up in case you violate what your, your duty is. But we just take all these people, pay a minimum wage, and I had one of them say, I'm going to stick my hands down your pants in Las Vegas because it's my administrative privilege. So I've got a clip here from what uh, the uh, famous uh, movie. In fact, I, yeah, that's right. Treasure of the Sierra Madre is my grandfather's favorite movie. I watched it with him before he died at the hospital. Th this movie, <laughs> you've seen it in uh, some comedy films like Badges. We don't need no stinking badges. But uh, here it is from the original uh, a, a film where they're talking about, hey, badges, we don't need no stinking badges. Well, the TSA, they've got badges, but they were just given to them. No training, no nothing. They just trample over everyone. Yeah, it's the treasure of the Sierra Madres. Famous uh, film, of course. Um, in fact, I'm having a senile moment. Who's the guy in the Maltese Falcon? Humphrey Bogart's in it. Let's go ahead and go to this clip of the TSA, because I guarantee you, after they strip them of the officer name and the badge and the bonded officer of the state court or the federal court, they're just going to say, 
You know, used to, you had to have military officers commissioned by Congress because they wouldn't trust the president to appoint his own military people. Why? Because the president could become a dictator. Separation of powers. Now it's just all hand out badges, everybody. Let them, let them strip search granny over and over again. Let's go to this Humphrey Bogart film. Here it is. Estrechadita. Oiga, señor. We are federales. You know. The mountain police. If you're the police, where are your badges? Badges? We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. Better not come any closer. Same thing with the TSA. Uh, listen, I'm going to stick my hands down your five-year-old daughter's pants and grab her genitalia. Uh, Miss USA, we're going to grab her vagina as well. It's freedom. It's stopping Al-Qaeda. This old lady here on an oxygen tank, we're going to strip her down, keeping you safe. <laughs> Everything's fine. We've got a microwave oven here that doesn't even protect you, but it's all right. We're going to do it. This is what's going on in this country. So people are waking up to the fact that uh, their stinking badges are made up. Now, continuing and moving right along, Bush press secretary calls Ron Paul nuts following 911 Glee comments. And Ron Paul basically came out uh, to Ari Fleischer. And, you know, he made the point that Bush was gleeful and it's been confirmed they wanted to attack Iraq within minutes of 9-11 and blame all these enemies and take domestic rights. And, and that there have been reports that Bush and, and Cheney were happy about it. Marvin Bush gave a speech admitting it. We filmed in Austin. So all of this has gone on, and Ron Paul comes out and says, think of what happened after 9-11. The minute before there was any assessment, there was glee administration because now we can debate Iraq, and so the war drums beat, Paul said. That's exactly what they're doing now with Iran. See, it's the idea of people that have products and ideas who want to be friends with everybody and engage in commerce versus those that just want to attack everybody. And the American ideal of George Washington is be friends with everybody Unless they attack you, well, the globalists just attack themselves and then say a foreign enemy did it. So there's that report, and uh, the clown is Ari Fleischer, working for known war criminals on record. Uh, continuing, Ron Paul dominates favorable Twitter election coverage. We've got a report on that. He overall, uh, if you scan Twitter, is the overall uh, positive person. He's won all the major straw polls, and of course, he is the favorite to win Iowa right now. So Mother Jones, other George Soros banker-run, fake liberal, fascistic sites have come out and said, well, just don't worry. You know, if Ron Paul wins in Iowa, it's a fluke. Just just, just never mind him. Like I was watching Slimeball Chris Matthews in there during the break uh, on MSNBC, and he was saying, oh, well, Ron Paul may be in second place in Iowa or first place, but he is not even credible, so let's just not look at him. A bunch of political sold-out whores say, don't look at Ron Paul. Well, you want to look there immediately. Uh, continuing, we're going to go to break and come back with our top story of the evening, this big Durban, South Africa, uh, UN meeting that is taking uh, place. But, but when are we going to get to the news report on the, uh, the $600,000 speedboat? Okay, so right before our Corzine interview, we're going to... We're going to do that at the very end. Okay, so that's coming up. Again, I've, I've, I know boats, folks, and I've seen this boat. You can buy six of these for the same price. Just another example of government corruption. And we've got our reporters out in Austin to show you a $600,000 drug interdiction boat. Uh, that's coming up. But let's hit, this final, let's hit this final point before we go to our interview. Uh, UN calls for eco-fascist world government at uh, Durban Summit. International Climate Court of Justice, they're calling for carbon taxes, carbon rations on each individual citizen. Just an absolute tyranny where you are literally not going to piss in the commode without some UN communist bureaucrat telling it's okay. Brainwashing of your kids, cutting off energy to the third world, a billion dead. We're going to be breaking this down in just a moment uh, with our guest. And with more on these globalist bureaucrats trying to set up their little eco-dictatorship, we're joined by Lord Christopher Moncton, the leading uh, expert uh, and champion of exposing this 21st century authoritarianism uh, that looked invincible just five years ago, but is now flailing 
uh, in its apparent death throes, but uh, still clinging to life and still as dangerous as ever, unfortunately. And with him in Durban, South Africa, where they're having this conference, is Mark Moreno of Climate Depot, the leading group here in the United States. And of course, he's been an advisor to the Congress as well. Lord Monckton, of course, was one of the chief advisors to Margaret Thatcher. He's a journalist. Uh, and researcher as well as an inventor. And again, he joins us from this International Climate Court of Justice. Now they have courts and we must pay a price to the earth, which means paying money to Al Gore uh, and others. Lord Moncton, thank you for joining us. It's a real pleasure, Alex. Uh, in fact, the authoritarianism of the UN knows no bounds. On entirely arbitrary grounds, they tried to ban me from the conference once I arrived here. So I went away and we got a plane and I dropped in by parachute instead. And they weren't used to dealing with that. And it's had massive publicity around the world and the UN is now looking very silly indeed for having tried to ban me on an entirely trumped up nonsense which they've now had to back off from. Well, that's, uh, that's amazing. And, and, and this isn't the first time they've tried this, is it? No, they're always doing this. The fact is that we are now uh, the Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow, which is the uh, environmental charity that I uh, come here with, which has real projects to help the poor people of Africa and of Latin America. It's not just a pressure group. Um, they are, are the only organization here which disagrees with what I'm going to call the Marxist party line, what they would call the scientific consensus, let's call it what it is, the Marxist party line, on this whole climate nonsense. And so they always do harass us. I mean, four or five years ago in Bali, where I had booked a room for press conferences through the UN Secretariat, we were in a press conference one day, very well attended, when along came the chief of the secretariat and said, you can't have press conferences in this room. And I said, well, we booked these in good faith. And they said, we don't care, yours is the wrong message and we'll have you arrested if you go on giving out the wrong message. That's the kind of thing that the UN does to us every time. And you may remember in Copenhagen last year, I was knocked out by a policeman, not sure whether he was a Danish policeman or a UN policeman, but either way, I was hit from behind while walking away from the policeman in question. There's no doubt they do not like hearing home truths about how their little scientific scam and fraud is collapsing and how even if they were right on the science, the near unanimous view uh, in the peer-reviewed literature is that, economically speaking, it's better to sit back, enjoy the sunshine, and do nothing. But the real breaking news here at this conference, Alex, is the extraordinary story that in the 138-page document to which the UN's bureaucrats fondly think the various member states, all 194 of them, of the Framework Convention on Climate Change are going to agree, there are now provisions for protecting the rights, not of people, not of animals, not of plants, but of Mother Earth. We're now in straightforward, old-fashioned superstition territory now. The rights of Mother Earth, and they're going to be enforced against the West only by a new international climate court run by the UN with absolute power to order Western countries such as the United States to hand over money and to run their economies and their environments in whatever way the so-called court is. Now, sir, court sir, I wanna, sir, I want to go through this as you join us from South Africa, but what, just two or three months ago, the UN said we want green helmets that will invade your country, so now uh, the UN and NATO will put some rebels in and then claim that they're a democratic group and NATO bombards and calls it peace and the peace president gets behind it, Obama. And they're talking about another peace prize because how great these so-called uh, peace wars are. And so I've also seen cases where these UN carbon credits, as you know, uh, in, in South America, Central America, and Africa, mainstream, even New York Times admits that they come in and kill the locals to take their property to then plant trees on it to save the earth. I mean, isn't this just a new excuse for select globalist corporate colonialism to invade and take over land but also then shut down real free market companies as we see power plants being shut down now all over the u.s and they're now admitting okay your prices are going up that's right uh, let's try and deal with the business of uh, invading people's villages and moving out or killing the villagers this has happened not that far from here in uganda where large areas of land were cleared 
so that the government of Uganda could claim quite falsely that the land was being used as what is called a carbon sink. And all of this is the kind of nonsensical, topsy-turvy, false accounting that leads to these ghastly actions where goons from governments and from the UN go in and shoot people who are on land that they want to take over and turn into a so-called carbon sink. This is becoming rather frightening, Alex. As you know, I often have to calm you down and say, no, 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 it's not as bad as all that. Fact is that this UN conference has gone far, far further than any other in what is essentially a sustained, malevolent attack on the free West. It, the, the entire agreement is framed so that there is no question of democratic election of this world government that they're so rapidly establishing. The thousand new bureaucracies that were created at Cancun are now all beavering away to undermine the West like termite ants. All of this is going on and the most extreme document I've ever read is this latest one with its criminal court, with its rights of Mother Earth, with the right of uh, small island states to survive the rising sea level, which incidentally, Alex, has been rising at a dizzying rate equivalent to two inches per century over each of the last eight years, according to the latest satellite. So that's not going to give them much problem, is it? So all of this fiction and all of this uh, fraud is now being encapsulated in one giant document which now says they in effect want to make the world colder by two Celsius degrees which is three Fahrenheit degrees it's quite a big drop you're getting kind of on for a third of the way back to the last ice age if you do that that would kill hundreds of millions but that's what the lunatics and that's the only word I can think of to describe them, the lunatics here are arguing for. They're arguing that carbon dioxide concentration should now be cut back to effectively not much more than 200 parts per million. And that is the point at which plants and trees die because they don't have enough carbon dioxide. Let me stop but you there. Let me stop you there because... Be, but, this is quite extraordinary. I mean, this is incredible. By the way, I well, then I want you to really bore down into this because it's important. You're there. You're, you've gotten the document. You're breaking it down. You were instrumental at the Copenhagen event uh, helping get the document where they called for world government and almost doubling the cuts on carbon emissions of the third world that is an admitted, what, billion dead people over a decade death sentence. This is a really a almost a military attack on infrastructure, on energy that a foreign enemy that Stalin or Hitler could never have dreamed of a Achieving. And when you look at the carbon cycle, sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, and oxygen, they've picked carbon dioxide, because folks know sunlight's good, water's good, uh, and uh, that uh, oxygen's good. So they literally are teaching kids that carbon dioxide's evil. They have all these video games where they fight carbon dioxide monsters. But I want you to go back to what you just said and go over this document. This is breaking news at uh, your Science and Public Policy website and at InfoWars as well. But and, and, and you guys are there in South Africa covering this where they're openly saying they want they've said geoengineered things if need be, because I know the world's already in a very low carbon dioxide rate from what it's been in past millennia and actually cut it. I mean, these people, it's like a science fiction movie, like they're demons from hell or something. What they are, Alex, is certifiably insane. There's really no other way of describing it to want to make the planet two degrees cooler, which is effectively what their target now means. To want to take the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere down to the point where trees and plants will die. To do these things and to say that Western emissions of carbon dioxide must begin to decline immediately and we must cut by, get this, more than 100% by 2050. So there'll be no coal-fired power stations, no automobiles, no oil-fired power stations, no gas-fired power stations, no industry, no hospitals. We will be straight back to the Stone Age, Alex, if they get away with this nonsense, and without even the right to light a carbon-emitting fire in our caves. And if we misbehave, the International Climate Court will be there to order the troops in to make sure that we shut down our industries as just as fast and as completely wow. as this latest draft requires. Now, here is the really odd thing about this, Alex. 
I'm not making this stuff up. You may think this is so extreme, but Monckton must have finally flipped his top and gone completely mad or banged his head on landing off his parachute. But no, I haven't. All of this is actually in the document that I got from the UN's documentation center, and it was available, provided you knew to ask for it, to any journalist who wanted a copy of it. Not one of them anywhere in the world, as far as I know, has reported the details that you'll find at scienceandpublicpolicy.org, at climatedepot.org, uh, on your website, website uh, infowars.com. We are the few people that are telling the world what is in this document. Now, there's no incentive to me to make this stuff up. Because if I did, people would look at the document and say, oh no, it's just all fiction, he's just making it up. All of this is actually there. It is plainly of interest to the peoples of the West, uh, so that readers of the Times of London, the Times of New York, etc., would surely be intrigued to know this stuff. And yet, and here's the really sinister thing, not a word of any of this is appearing in print. Why do you think that is, Alex? Because I can't work it out. Well, this is what's happened. You got the secret Copenhagen text and torpedoed it. You helped publicize the emails that got leaked. And we've had several climate gates since then. I think it's fleeing forward. Instead of trying to get the incremental power grab, they see, and they've got national and international polls, as you know, coming out, that it's flipped completely. In some cases, higher than 80% know it's pure bull. People have now discovered... Uh, they've now discovered that China makes no cuts, India, Mexico, 100 plus other third world countries. We all make cuts in the West. They know it's a death sentence to our industry, and they know insiders like General Electric that are on the President's Council, the same in your country, are exempt. So they know what it is, a mafia power grab. These people aren't even well-meaning socialists at the end of the day. These are cold-blooded mafia people. So I think you've answered your own question. They're operating by stealth now and going for it all. I mean, I mean, is that what you're seeing or, or is that what your gut is? I mean, what's the sense of them uh, this time as they lash out and try to ban you from the uh, uh, conference? I mean, are they showing even more fear of you and Mark Moreno than they normally do? They are absolutely terrified. I went to see Negumi Endo, who is the UN official that sent me an email arbitrarily saying, you've been banned. She didn't even say why I'd been banned. She just said, we hope you will accept that this ban was appropriate without telling us why it was we'd been banned. It turned out that I'd been banned because, she said, I had been operating a video camera, which I hadn't been operating, and that I had been failing to obey instructions of UN officials when no UN official had given any instruction either to me or in my hearing. Likewise, they said I was harassing people when, in fact, in the end, when I said this is an outrage and I will have to go to court unless you at least withdraw that one, they backed off and said, OK, the allegation of harassment didn't have substance and wasn't pursued. The fact was the entire thing was simply made up because they knew that if I got into that conference, which of course eventually I did by threatening to go to the court of KwaZulu-Natal, the high court, and get an order telling the UN to behave because they hadn't complied even with the most elementary principles of natural justice. They backed off pretty quick when I threatened to do that. So I got in, got this document and wrote it up and got it out. And they were trying very, very hard to stop me because they knew that if anybody was going to expose this scam for exactly what it is, it was probably going to be somebody like me. But yet again, they have failed. And I can tell you this, Alex, it's rather like a funeral parlor in the conference this year. At Copenhagen, there were 30,000 people. At the um, Cancun conference, probably 20 to 25,000. Now, uh, I think there were about 10,000 there. The UN is claiming 15,000 were registered, but in fact, quite a lot of them didn't even bother to turn up. This whole process is collapsing. As it collapses, what we're seeing with these extremist documents is the UN desperately trying to keep the process going by adding new and absurd commitments, such as to go back halfway towards the, 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 the last ice age and to reduce carbon dioxide concentration to the point where trees and plants begin to die. These, these extreme measures are simply, they are, they're the death throes of this process. That's really what it is. Well, in it closing... So sure. 
Yeah, they've become so entirely detached from any form of rationality or reality that they no longer understand how malevolent, how unpleasant, how anti-democratic, how anti-Western, and how downright unfair to the people and other creatures of this planet all of these measures that they propose would be. They have lost the plot, and I think the only thing we can do now, Alex, is to say that the UN and the UN Framework, Framework Convention on Climate Change must be closed down immediately and all of the bureaucrats, of the thousands and tens of thousands of bureaucrats, hundreds of thousands and deep, probably millions by now, living off the world's taxpayers must all be kicked out and told to go and get a proper job. Absolutely. Uh, uh, in closing, though, how do you expect them now to regroup and counterstrike? You predicted them with all these new fear mongering uh, announcements. You, uh, now they've had all these other climate gates, countless ones, frauds, confirmation of the previous frauds. I mean, their credibility is shot. But as you've said, tens of billions has been invested uh, by the insider robber barons to try to consolidate power through their communist uh, handmaidens. And so they're not going to go away. How do you expect them to reinvent themselves? Uh, Alex, that's a very good question about how they're going to try to keep this process going now that it's died on its feet here at Durban. And I think what they will do is they will, first of all, as usual, declare a success. They're going to negotiate all through the night. It's the usual tired public relations game plan. They will emerge tomorrow morning with their ties around their ears, stubble on their cheeks, and a wan smile on their faces saying we've done it. But all they will do this time is simply have what they did at Bali, which is another so-called roadmap, which is a way of kicking bureaucratic procedures into the long grass for a few years, from which I think this time it will never emerge again. But they have a backup plan, which is the Rio Earth Summit, which is the 20th anniversary of the 1992 Rio Earth Summit. And this time I think they're going to try and put forward a binding treaty on biodiversity, which sounds all terribly gooey and friendly. And in that treaty on biodiversity, they will craftily bundle all the climate stuff in the hope that nobody will notice. However, UN bureaucrats and little Hitlers and dictators, I will be there in Rio, and don't you dare try to keep me out by lies and cheating the next time round. I will be reading every draft of this proposed treaty, and if there is any of the nonsense in it that there was in the draft which was to be considered by people here at Durban, then I will be exposing it all across the world yet again. After the Rio summit in July, there is then yet another of these annual conferences of the parties to the Framework Convention on Climate Change, scheduled for Qatar in December of next year. And I don't think that very many people will be going to that at all. They'd be lucky to get 5,000 at that. And I think this process is now dying on its feet as the science collapses, the economics has never been there, the vast majority of economic opinion says it's much better to do nothing than to try to prevent global warming by taxing, trading, regulating, reducing or replacing CO2. And so I think that the scare is now pretty much over and the next thing that I will be arranging is to make sure that certain bogus scientists and bogus UN officials who have clearly committed specific frauds, scientific and economic frauds, as part of this so-called process, will be reported to the police in their respective countries. We've got a whole project now to do this, and we will be sending these people for trial, and we hope that the judges on hearing just what they've been up to will send those who are guilty of fraud to jail. Well, Lord Moncton, let me, let me stop you briefly because that was my final question before we uh, uh, thank you for being with us and uh, uh, Dr. Mark Moreno, who's there working with you, and, oh. and to get his expert uh, perspective integrated with yours, is that people see it as you know, extreme or, or aggressive to call for the jailing of these people, but your estimates are well-researched, and I've seen other mainline estimates. If you cut the carbon by the levels they talked about in Copenhagen, and, and as I've read over this new document, it's even more draconian in their flight forward, we're talking conservatively, as you've documented, a billion deaths. This is bigger than Hitler, Stalin, Mao, uh, and, and all other 20th century mass murder combined by an order of three or four times conservatively. And we have to understand, you know, earlier when you mentioned what's going on in Africa and Latin America, it's in major news that governments and companies to get these 
these carbon uh, sinks and, and money are forcing people off their land, killing people, shooting them, and the news is kind of like, well, it's for the earth, I guess it's okay. I mean, we've seen the Greenies come out, the London Guardian everywhere, and endorse green fascism. They say, yes, you bet we're going to arrest you for not doing what we say. We're seizing control. We're going to burn down ski resorts. Yeah, you know, we're going to arrest Moncton. Uh, I mean, they are aggressive authoritarians, and they're not dressed like the Nazis. They're not dressed like the Soviets. Every generation expects it to be looking the same. This is our generation's Hitlers. They've got to go to prison for the mass murder and eugenics, because you know, sir, at the end of the day, they're eugenicists. They just want to cut... Uh, as State Department Memorandum 200 says, the, the, the energy supplies of the third world that is a death sentence. I'm sorry to be ranting. Well, no, well, I mean, I can quite understand, because here I am in South Africa, where the internet works occasionally, as we've just found out, and 80% of South Africa is lucky enough to have electricity, 20% still doesn't. But South Africa's electricity accounts for 60% of all the electricity consumed in Africa, which means that most countries in Africa have practically no electricity at all, except, in course, of course, in the fancy air-conditioned government offices. So we are seeing a conspiracy, if you like, by the world's governing class, the world's increasingly communistic or fascistic class politique, against the ordinary peoples of the world. And of course, it's the poor who get hurt first. As you were saying, the farmers of Uganda who are being kicked off their land and shot if they disagree by uh, UN troops and Ugandan troops going in to create these entirely fictitious carbon sinks, which are complete nonsense. And this is, of course, a worrying trend. Now, it's very difficult to nail them down for genocide for what they're doing at the moment. What we can do, however, is go after those scientists and bureaucrats who have been peddling deliberate scientific frauds. And there are one or two, you can only do sort of one or two clear cases. You start with those. And you put those cases to the police with a lawyer and you say, here is the matter of the fraud, here is how they hope to make money from it, here is how much money they've made from it, and here is why it is definitely a scientific fraud, and here is independent scientific evidence that it is a fraud. And then you get the prosecuting authorities to do their job on a relatively small number of really bad scientists who have got away with this so far because they think that the governing class of the world will protect them. But no, it won't. Once we pin down the few clearest frauds and report the various people in various countries uh, that have perpetrated these frauds... It'll fall like dominoes. Once their collars start to be felt, just a couple of them, a couple of senior ones, they will immediately back off and this entire process will collapse. And having seen the horror, and I mean the horror, and the genocidal destruction which, would, which this agreement that they're being asked to sign here would entail, then it is absolutely now necessary for the sake of the life of humanity that this process be stopped at once. And that's why we're thinking we now have to say, no more, Mr. Nice Guy, if you are a scientist that has committed a fraud for the sake of getting more funding for yourself or your university, or for the sake of going along with this scam because it gives you status and position which you wouldn't otherwise have, we are watching, we are gathering the evidence, and we will see you prosecuted. And if you are guilty of fraud, then we will see you go to jail. And in the UK, the minimum sentence for the kind of fraud that's being perpetrated here is at least 10 years imprisonment without the chance of parole. Absolutely. And look, they're guaranteed to end up going to prison someday because if they keep carrying out their plans, the crimes will be so great, history shows they'll be resisted, and then it won't be prison. They're going to be facing something even more than that. I mean, these people are true eugenicist green nazis anti-human scum and lord moncton we really appreciate your tireless effort crisscrossing the world uh you know in your great calling to stand up against these people thank you for talking to us and we look forward to talking to you in the future thank you for breaking this electronic berlin wall uh of uh media blackout that's happening in the west and uh, and we look forward to that's talking a wonderful description alex electronic berlin wall that is exactly 
what it is. These Marxist journalists who have captured one by one the newspapers and electronic media of the West are now deliberately ganging together to throttle the West that nurtured them and destroy the lives of our people and the hopes of our industries and the future of our nations. And we must, as you rightly say, fight and fight and fight again to save the rationality and reason and cheerful chaos of the free market and the prosperity of the West and the democracy, which we have until now been fortunate to be able to take for granted. So God bless you, Alex. I'm going to hand you over now to Mark Morano. Thank you so much, Lord Moncton. Wow, it is good to know that those guys are over there fighting because we wouldn't even have this information if they didn't go to every one of these conferences and be basically poked and prodded and abused by the <coughs> miscreant security forces uh, of these people. Uh, and uh, again, they're there in the same conference room. Mark Moreno is now coming over uh, via the wonders of uh, the internet uh, and uh, joining us via Skype from Durban, South Africa. Uh, to uh, give us a, uh, a breakdown from his perspective on exactly what's happening there. But, but again, this is a news blackout on this, the most draconian. You can read it at InfoWars.com, ClimateDepot.com, ScienceAndPublicPolicy.org, the document that reads like something out of a science fiction movie if you want to seize total control. And now for a, a quick interview with uh, Mark Moreno as well. I know it's late at night over there, Mark. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for breaking uh, this uh, blackout, this electronic Berlin Wall. Thank you. Uh, so uh, you're back in the nest of, uh, of authoritarian control freaks. What's it like? Well, as Maxwell Smart used to say, we're, we're living in danger every minute. We're being blacked out, threatened by security, threatened to be thrown out, threatened violence, but we're loving every minute of it. Uh, this has been a situation uh, where we go around in the media room, uh, Lord Moncton and I, and almost to the, the, the mainstream media of the West is not interested. They look at us as though we're some kind of aliens. Our simple pitch is we're global warming skeptics that are at this converse, conference, and we're here to condemn it. Would you like some balance in your reporting? All the mainstream media is not interested, but the developing world's media is interested. And I'm talking about Chinese media, South African media, Indian media, um, and uh, some other African media we did. It's amazing how the developing world is so receptive to this message. In fact, we're on the front page of the South African newspaper, wow. the only climate skeptics at this conference. So they get it. But the other media, we had a press conference on Wednesday where I released the Climate Depot A to Z report. And I literally, from every letter of the alphabet, their claims not only are failing to materialize, the evidence is going the opposite direction. We were heckled by UK Guardian reporters. We were heckled by UN delegates. We were heckled by Greenpeace, who planted them in there. The UN made us start the press conference late, and they stopped us, you know, cutting our time short. They did not want us there, but we persevered. We made made our presentation, the 61-page report, to the United Nations, and I told reporters there that this is now the level of medieval witchcraft. Everywhere you look at the UN, it says more floods, more uh, drought, more tornadoes, more hurricanes, and they all say we must act to stop this. They actually believe, like the Aztecs, that we can slaughter people and have acts of legislation to, to change the weather. The UN has, has reduced itself to medieval witchcraft at this point, where they're claiming they can control the weather. This is the most bizarre conference of all of them that I've attended. They've really morphed into we can control the weather now. It's not even really that much about global temperatures anymore. Well, yeah, they teach school children there shouldn't even be... Uh seasons now and, and they cry whenever they see housing developments i have family this has happened to they say they're murdering the bunny rabbits they i mean, I mean it's incredible brainwashing uh now i was talking to lord moncton obviously a few minutes ago who's there with you uh, and he was describing this as violent death rows uh do you concur with that analysis and what's the uh, overall uh spirit of uh, these people yeah, I mean, I, I've, been to, I've been to pretty much every conference since the Earth Summit in 2002, and then they've, been, they've always picked exotic locations. They've been Bali, Indonesia, and South America. 
And this is by far the conference with the least amount of energy, the least amount of interest, and a total of boredom has set in because everyone knew going into this uh, that there was being no world leaders there. President Obama didn't come. There were no Hollywood celebrities. Angelina Jolie, Leonardo DiCaprio, Harrison Ford, even Al Gore were all supposed to be here, and none of them showed up. And this is just, it's in the death throes. And I think what's happening now is a retooling of this entire environmental thrust. And the Rio conference, which I believe will be the end of May into June of 2012, is going to be a shift where climate is now going to be rolled in to the larger issue of sustainable development, species, deforestation. And in a way, this serves the UN purposes much better because instead of just focusing on the atmosphere and industry, now they can control the oceans. Now they can control roadways, land use, agriculture, you name it. Under that rubric of uh, sustainable development, they can cover it all. And we cannot ever forget that it was Republican presidents who got us into this. The first George H.W. Bush in 1992 went to the first Earth Summit and committed the United States to these United Nations treaties, which then led to Kyoto, which then led the second George Bush, sent Colin Powell to the Earth Summit in Johannesburg, South Africa, which I was at. The Bush family has done more to, to commit the United States to environmental and United Nations lunacy than all the Democrats combined. And we have to look at our two top nominees and we have to get terrified. Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich are incapable of standing up to the United Nations, of standing up to the international green movement. Uh, uh, Mitt Romney, who had John Holdren as an advisor, is clueless. Newt Gingrich, who has a new book coming out next year, has a climatologist named Catherine Hayhoe, who is a committed and embarrassing global warming alarmist. Don't be fooled for a moment by Newt Gingrich's uh, recent uh, sounding of skepticism. Neither of these candidates are equipped to handle this, and it will be nothing more than a continuation of the disastrous policies of Bush 1 and Bush 2 if either of these Republicans get in. Well, it's good to see you fired up, and I've never seen you quite like this. Certainly, you can smell blood with these fraudsters. Of course, it was at the uh, Rio de Janeiro conference, as you know, it was at 92, where Maurice Strong publicly said, we're going to have a post-industrial world. We are going to shut down the United States. We are basically going to carry all of this out. And that is exactly uh, what they were basically uh, able to do. So uh, looking at this, I wanted to bring up a couple of uh, positive points that I've seen here in the U.S., and that is the EPA on its own uh, came out and said we're going to shut down most of the coal power plants, of course those that aren't owned by insiders like General Electric. Obama's had to back off on declaring carbon dioxide, at least from those, as deadly nerve gas poison that plants breathe, but still he's moving ahead with some of the shutdowns. And, of course, you know, the EPA was going to declare hay dust and any type of dirt or dust on your farm as $10,000 fines, first offense, just a total way to shut down small farmers and ranchers. The House passed by a giant margin today, the Hill newspaper is reporting, uh, that, uh, that they're not going to do that. I mean, this is clearly just a way for this government mafia to make breathing evil, dust on a farm evil. I mean, it is so yeah. incredible. But more and more, people are realizing that this is a selective economic warfare attack by people that have said they want a post-industrial world and who've always hated the free market and capitalism. Yeah, this is death by bureaucratic bean counters. They've gone after our ice makers on our refrigerator. They've gone after our dishwasher. Our dishwashing liquid now has to be green and therefore not cleaning. They've gone after the washing machines. They've sapped the water and the power. They've gone after our toilets, our shower heads. The Japanese government's telling the citizens that to go to bed early to prevent global warming. Uh, the UN chief has said people can't order ice water in restaurants because of the carbon footprint. This is the level of control that George Orwell didn't contemplate. He who controls carbon controls life, and I will add to that with the Rio Earth Summit coming up. He who controls carbon and controls land use policy and, uh, and, even, the, and even the oceans controls the world, and that's what they're going for. And this isn't conspiracy talk. This is in their documents. We're looking at this document. One of the most hilarious things about this 138-page document that Lord Monson wrote about was they want to stop wars, not because wars are bad for people, not because wars are bloody, uh, but they want to stop it because of war's impact on the atmosphere. The, the, in other words, the greatest reason not to fight a war is concern over climate change and global warming. This is the level of absurdity we've reached. 
All right, we're getting a bit of a, a Skype break up there from Durban, South Africa, right, but right. that's okay. It's great to even have your have your audio. It's kind of like an old Star Trek episode where we're talking to you from 20 <laughs> light years away, and it's uh, it's yeah. uh, breaking up a piece uh, a, a bit. Uh, going from memory, they're going to pull it up, and we might even cut the video in. Um, a few months ago, we went to one of the Smart Growth conferences here in town, and they had, I think the head of the Nature Conservancy was there, and our... Yeah, Mark Tursick, head of the uh, Nature Conservancy. And they went up to him and said, we'd like to speak to you about coal, because they were there saying shut down coal. And when they brought up, hey, uh, well, Obama said, you know, in that video clip that he wanted to bankrupt coal, what's your view on that? And he said, whoa, I'm not talking to you, interview over, and ran off like he was a vampire confronted with a giant silver cross. I mean, used to these people would get on the offensive if you got on the offensive now they just turn tail and run and uh, more and more uh, they don't have that crazed power seizing look in their eyes they're trying to regroup as you said and uh, move on to yes, I, mean, I mean major environmental and climate organizations are shutting their doors they're firing staffers climate stock exchanges are collapsing um, this was truly subprime science subprime economics subprime politics but we can never count them out because there's never any, any previous environmental scare that had this kind of funding, backing of the UN, or backing of the media. It's unprecedented. So it doesn't just die. And the head of the UN, Rajendra Pachari, the, of the, uh, the climate panel, is on record as saying global warming is but a, a symptom of a larger problem. And that larger problem is sustainable development and species extinction. They're already on record as doing the great shift. So I think what's going to happen is they're going to regroup. Climate's not going to go away, but it's going to be part of a larger picture where they're going to go after every conceivable way that human beings interact. And as the former founder, a co-founder of Greenpeace, Patrick Morris said, the modern environmental movement today is the most anti-human agenda that we have. We have a, at the UN conference, they had torches, solar torches they were trying to peddle for sub-Saharan Africa. People living in huts made of dung aren't offered coal-fired power plants, which Obama and other environmentalists prevent, but they're offered uh, solar panels, solar, uh, solar torches to read by at night. This is the perverse way, and they're actually people like Governor Brown in California who believe the developing world can't develop. The environmentalists tell them they can't have what we have. Darn, they missed it, but we've already raped the earth, and they can't rape it either. They can't make well, it. Well, look, look, you've been studying this as long as I have, but I've read all their literature. We've got hundreds of their books that I've read, Aaron Dykes has read here in our office in the last decade. I've made films on it. The lower level people mean well or useful idiots like supporters of Lenin and Stalin or Hitler. But at the higher levels, they say, look, well, there are too many people. We're going to get rid of these brown scum. You know, Margaret Sanger said, we've got to hire blacks as our front so we can kill these weeds. Well, we'll say we're liberal. You know, we, the American Nazis, in their words, have to pose as liberal to get away with this and not let them know that. And that's what it is. It's a death sentence. At the higher levels, yes. it's about, and they say it, blocking the third world from developing, which, by the way, actually makes people have less children, uh, but they don't care. It's just about cold-bloodedly blocking their development. And uh, so at the top from my research, these are knowingly uh, extremely virulent racist people. You know, look at Obama you know, increasing the funding for abortions in Africa. These are very, very sick people. From your research, uh, ha have you found parallels to that or, or, or do you disagree? No, absolutely. In fact, uh, Obama's science advisor, John Holdren, has actually said, first of all, uh, cheap energy is one of the hazards of a free society. And secondly, and most shockingly, he's on record. We dug up old newspaper clippings in the early 1970s that aren't available on LexisNexis or Google. And that John Holdren was uh, vociferously opposing the agricultural revolution of Norman Borlaug that brought agricultural uh, and ended famine throughout Asia in the late 1960s, 1970s. John Holdren opposed it because he didn't want the earth to be able to sustain that many extra people. Here was a classic example. When confronted in life, you have a choice. John Holdren chose death. John Holdren chose anti-technology. Norman Borlaug went on to win the Nobel Prize. It was one of the most celebrated scientists of our age, a man who probably saved hundreds of millions of people from starvation. And, and he just died a few years ago. He was also a global warming skeptic. But Norman Borlaug was a hero. John Holdren was a eugenicist who now is feeded by the mainstream media and Obama. So it's exactly what is going on. And these people are in high office.
us right now. Unbelievable. Who, but but we are seeing the mainstream media's decline right along with government's approval rating, right along with the climate uh, panic pushers. I mean, certainly uh, their fleeing forward, I think, is only going to destroy them uh, in the end. In closing, uh, tell us some of the uh, key things we should look at uh, in this uh, latest uh, power grab uh, where they, they, they cast themselves as saviors of the earth uh, when in truth they're eugenicists cutting off the power supplies and conscripting many people well, to... I think, yeah. I think the biggest thing coming out of this conference is this now, they're itching to get this international climate court uh, set up. And this court, if they, if they succeed in doing this, it's going to be, as Lord Monson said, a kangaroo court. But think about it, they're going to be, they've already got set up the mechanisms. In England, they already have government officials monitoring employees they're proposing carbon ration cards your home energy use your car mileage your train travel your airline travel the german climate advisor a man named schulenhuber wants a co2 budget for every man woman and child on the planet from beijing god, to berlin god. so all we have to do is the u.n climate court will then monitor all these things. nancy pelosi went to china and said we need a complete inventory on every aspect of our lives in order to fight global warming well those inventories they're talking about and they're doing this now the epa trying to do with industry carbon emissions they're trying to Everything's got to be, we're seeing this in South Africa. The industry, some of the industries are actually giving them the rope to hang themselves with and doing voluntary reporting on their CO2 emissions. Oh, I know. People put static. these these carbon indulgent stickers on their cars. I give Al Gore money. I'm allowed to drive. I'm loving. I'm good. I mean, they're just total useful idiots. And as this continues, Mark, uh, it, it, it's just so frightening to, to see these criminals casting themselves uh, as our saviors. But it's uh, great to hear you reporting that the uh, worm is certainly turning uh, on these guys. People should go read your reports and read the document for themselves because uh, it just looks like they're going for everything right now in a desperate attempt. Uh, I look forward to speaking to him when you get back with your final reports sometime next week. Mark Moreno, thank you so much and uh, be yeah. safe because these are, these, are, these are some very wicked people. They are. Thank you very much, Alex. Enjoy it. Thank you, and say bye to Lord Moncton for me. Okay, well, there goes Mark Moreno, a tireless fighter for freedom. You know, Stalin said, one man dies, it's a tragedy. 10,000 die, it's a statistic. And these globalist eugenics uh, bureaucrats have already killed tens of millions, conservatively. Um, and they know what they're doing, and I've been around them, I've talked to them, they're very sick people. They get off on the power of doing this to people. These are really unhappy, bad people. Uh, who could care less about the environment. Uh, and, I mean, they, they've got to be faced down. And, and again, it looked like there was no way to stop them. Their stone wall that they were invincible was there. But as people like Mark Moreno, Lord Moncton, and others exposed them, as we exposed them, as Tim Ball exposed them, Dr. Ball, the worm has turned and the pendulum is swinging back. And the problem is these people are going to metastasize. Just like the eugenics quarterly changed its name after Hitler here in the U.S. Just like Planned Parenthood was pro-Nazi and you know you know changed changed their tactics later, they're going to change their spots, and we've got to be aware of it. Now we're going to uh, go after this break to something special. We're going to talk to the Don of Obama uh, criminal activity, his big economic advisor, the guy that holds thirty-five thousand dollar plate dinners for him. We're going to talk to Don Corleone. Uh, John Corzine, straight ahead. You're not going to want to miss this. It's InfoWars Nightly News. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of bark. When it's showtime, whimpering like little shih tzus. You want big cuts. Lon Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis, no problem. Got a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education, gone. Interior, energy, HUD, commerce, gone. Later bureaucrats, that's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to drain the swamp? Ron Paul, do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, 
It's all there. Infowars.com. Welcome back. It's Infowars Nightly News, another marathon transmission. I appreciate you joining us. You are truly revolutionaries in the development of alternative media to counter these criminals. The fact that you care enough to go to prisonplanet.tv, the fact that you care enough to support us, that you spread the word, that is what is making history right now as we reach tens of millions of people a week. Thank you so much. Okay, I've got a few other news items I want to hit uh, before we get to some important uh, film review I'm doing. And then, of course, uh, our interview with Mr. Korzheim. Risk of Israel-U.S. strike on Iran has tripled Barclays claims. This is out of Reuters. The chance of a military strike on Iran has tripled in the past year. The senior geopolitical analyst Barclays said it's gone from a 5 to 10 percent to 25 to 30 percent. Our intel is it's not going to happen until later next year as an October supply, uh, surprise for the 2012 uh, election. And uh, finally, we've got Moscow sees no military component in Iran's nuclear program. No kidding, it's been looked over by the United Nations. This is just a pretext to attack that country. Uh, continuing, Napolitano on CFR, the full video is at Infowars.com. The head of Homeland Security, Mrs. Janet Reno, Janet Napolitano, has said that uh, she jokes with elitist over Drudge Report calling her Big Sis moniker. And she says she's very proud of the fact that she's turned America into a third world cesspit. Uh, so that article is up at Infowars.com right now. Uh, a few of the other articles we've got, we already knew this. We're not saying Occupy people protesting Wall Street are bad. It's just that it was started by George Soros in the White House and they run it. And here's an World Net Daily article, Occupy Nerve Center staffed by Soros activists, professional radicals caught red-handed running so-called leaderless movement. They always said it was leaderless so they could control it themselves. And finally, I'll have to get this more next week, but Daily Mail, no more talking behind the wheel. Scientists develop a system that can shut down your cell phone while you're driving. Oh, sounds good on the surface, but it's all about everything being pre-tracked and controlled in this technocratic system. And I said finally, but here is finally. We're on our own now. Cameron uses the veto for the first time to opt out of the new treaty to save the euro and give more power to Brussels. That's how countries act as firewalls against tyranny. World government is being established by the bankers of the euro right now, and they're using it um, to get rid of national sovereignty. And the globalist Cameron has said no in England. We'll continue to follow that throughout next week. Now I want to go to a movie review. We did Clockwork Orange what, on Tuesday night, and here on Friday night, uh, I have eight different clips from an amazing 1964 film, Seven Days in May. Now, it's got globalist propaganda in it, but it shows how the leftists that made this were useful idiots. The evil general that wants to use the NAS, National Alert FEMA system, this was in 63, Four before that was set up to take over, he he has basically set up the military to use this emergency alert system as a pretext to take over. And he speaks out against the one worlders and the new world order. So now the idea back then was, because this was true, some generals were, were going to do a coup against the new world order communist and bankers. And so they were worried back then, so they, they use a Smedley Butler type. 30 years after he did it, the Marine Corps officer in the fictitious film playing Smedley Butler, basically, to say no to martial law and warn the president. And so that's basically what Mr. Douglas does. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, go to those clips, but I just want to illustrate to you that they just had Dr. Strangelove the year before in 63, exposing government launching a nuclear attack on itself basically as a pretext for martial law and global domination. And then another film comes out a year later where they talk about generals using COG or Plan R to take over the government. And so we're going to go ahead and go to that first clip uh, of the Burt Lancaster, Kurt Douglas, Paramount Pictures based on the 62 novel by Fletcher Connell and Charles Bailey II seven days in May. Here's that first clip. Lyman lovers! So there's pro 
protesters in America. People are angry. Americans are fighting progressives. But the right winger wants to come save everybody. Of course, now it's the left coming in to supplant free speech. So again, the, the globalists were coming in to take over America. They knew the military was upset, so they put movies out about right-wingers using a martial law system. Right-wing, left-wing means nothing, but now, in, 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 in common terms, they're actually implementing all of this, but now the left, in their own labels, is using this system against us. They've become what they warned about. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this uh, clip of uh, Gene Scott's speech excerpts uh, where they basically, well, I mean, the clip speaks for itself. Here it is. Perhaps patriotism is old-fashioned. Perhaps love of country is outdated. Perhaps even a minute degree of sentiment to one's motherland is to be considered passé. But God help us, and God help our country, if the cynics, the one-worlders, the intellectual dilettantes ever persuade us that these things have passed us by. Because, ladies and gentlemen, patriotism, loyalty, sentiment, they are the United States of America. So there you go. That's General Scott. I'm not a teleprompter reader. I call it Gene Scott. Another uh, General Scott speech excerpts. Uh, he talks about the threat of one-worlders. He's going to bring in martial law to stop the communist one-worlders. But they're not communists for the little guy, they're the banksters. Let's go to this uh, next clip, it's uh, self-explanatory. Uh, Mr. President, have you ever heard of a military unit known as ECON, ECOMCON? E what? I'm sorry, E-C-O-M-C-O-N, ECOMCON. This is Smedley Butler. What does it mean? The archetype warning them. Abbreviations, it could stand for emergency communications control. Have you ever authorized the formation of, of any type of secret unit, regardless of his name, that that has something to do with the, uh, well, preserving the security of things like uh, television, telephone, or radio? No, I haven't. Henderson said an odd thing to me, sir, something that, well, I, I can't shake quite loose of. He said they were spending more time training for seizing than for preventing. You're suggesting what? Well, I'm not sure, Mr. President, just some possibilities, what we call... Uh, capabilities in military intelligence. I'm suggesting, Mr. President, there's a military plot to take over the government. This may occur sometime this coming Sunday. So you, uh, you stand by the Constitution, Jakes? Never thought of it just like that, Mr. President, but well, that's what we've got, and I guess it's worked pretty well so far. I sure don't want to be the one to say we ought to change it. Neither do I. I remember what Harry Truman said one day, that inside this room, inside this room, the buck stops. So again, it's the evil anti-New World Order people that want to overthrow the government using the COG media takeover arm that they'd set up to a certain extent then, but wasn't in place till the 70s. And then now that they've got it, they're saying domestic terrorist free speech is evil. But that's how they sell it. And again, it's the archetype of the Marine Corps officer saying no. S. Smedley Butler, two-time Congressional Medal of Honor winner, they, he was approached during the 30s to make America basically a fascist country and take over. The point is this has already happened through Homeland Security and the staged terror attacks of 9-11. Now they're just mopping up all the free speech centers and shutting down the final levels of freedom. Okay, uh, let's uh, go ahead with the presidential advisor telling the president uh, that, hey, you know, what's wrong with the military training for this stuff? Forgive me, Mr. President, but it's some flying troops to the big cities and an alert. That seems to be not only logical, but prudent. Obviously, if the Russians struck, we'd need disciplined troops in the metropolitan areas to keep order and prevent complete breakdown. And at 2.20 tomorrow afternoon, somebody will have thrown a switch at Mount Sunder, General James Scott will be on all three television networks explaining to the people of the United States why this particular crucifixion is an act of faith. Mr. President, what are you waiting for? Fire Scott! Close down Mount Thunder! Declare a state of martial law! Then where do I stand? And that's another good point. When different groups try to take over, then the answer is martial law, which is the same thing. So there's a great danger in revolution. 
And that's the point that's made there. A very sophisticated film. You can rent it on Netflix or buy it at the movie store. The point is you should see Seven Days in May. Uh, continuing uh, here uh, with the clips, we had clip number five and number six here. Yeah, this is General Scott ask uh, the Marine Corps commander uh, if he'll go along with this or if he stands for the Constitution. And when the Marine Corps commander says, I stand for the Constitution, he says, then you take a vacation. That's basically how the system finds good and evil people. If you're good and they have you answer a questionnaire, they say, oh, you're a good person now. We're going to put you in supply or at, you know, Antarctica. But if you're a corrupt globalist, then they actually bring you in to run operations. Uh, here's that clip. This country's in trouble, James. Deep trouble. Now, there are two ways we can handle this. We can sit here in our duffs and ask for divine guidance. Or we can watch James. What would your advice be? Well, sir, we're a nation of laws, of rules. We're military men, so we've taken an oath to uphold the Constitution. The democratic way. Yes, sir, the democratic way. You're right, Jiggs. You're absolutely right. You know, Jiggs, you've been working too hard in this damned alert. You look tired. Why don't you take the rest of the week off? Unbelievable. Uh, let's continue here. This has always been a threat to our country, folks, and now we're up to the line here. It's really happening. It's not a movie. Uh, here's another clip where the President of the United States confronts General Scott on establishing secret base without knowledge of the President and the Budget Office in Congress. Iran, Contra, all of that. The black sites, the torture sites around the world. And uh, there's a succession of clips while, while they debate that. Here it is. You have used, without my authority, substantial sums from the Joint Chiefs Contingency Fund to establish a base and to train a special unit of troops whose purpose and even whose existence was kept secret from me, from responsible officials of the Bureau of the Budget, and members of the Congress. And the name of that unit? You know the unit. Its designation is ECOMCON. You accuse me of having lost their faith, and deliberately and criminally shut my ears to the national voice. I do. Where the hell have you heard that voice, General? In dark alleys? In secret places in the dead of night? How did that voice seep into a locked room full of conspirators? That's not where you hear the voice of the people, General, not in this republic. You want to defend the United States of America, then defend it with the tools it supplies you with, its constitution. You ask for a mandate, General, from a ballot box. You don't steal it after midnight. And then there's a clip where a senator tries to get into the secret base and gets locked up and they get out. Uh, here's a clip of that. Right now, the government of the United States is sitting on top of the Washington Monument, right on the very point, tipping right and left and ready to fall off and break up on a pavement. There are just a handful of men who can prevent that. And you're one of them. I'm going to tell you the damnedest story you ever heard. It's all for tonight, Sergeant. You're relieved. I'm taking the civilian in my custody. I'm sorry, Colonel, but I have orders that the civilian is not to leave the base, sir. Oh, that's all right, Sergeant. I'm countermanding those orders and escorting the civilian into town. Well, sir, now, I don't know. Colonel Broderick said that... It... Throw those keys over here. Eject that cartridge belt and throw it down on the ground. Do we have people today that blow the whistle on government corruption? Yeah, Pat Tillman did, and they killed him. The point is, we've got the same problems today, but people blew the whistle inside the ATF on the government shipping guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. We'd be in a lot worse shape today if it wasn't for all those silent people that did their duty. I won't even call them heroes. This idea of doing the right thing, it's not heroic, okay? Doing the right thing is not heroic. It's self-preservation. It's common sense. It's the survival instinct. If you let somebody enslave a bunch of innocent people or kill a bunch of innocent people, then you would allow that to yourself. It's common sense. It's not wimpy to have empathy, to feel somebody's pain. It's normal. It's, it, it's a human instinct. And it's because we've gotten accustomed to going along with other people's pain as long as it's not us. That's weakened us all. 
That's where you lose your humanity, your womanhood, your manhood. And I'm not giving mine up. My feelings are my strength, not a weakness like these psychopaths tell us. I want my feelings. I see things and know things they'll never know because I'm tied into the universe. I'm not here to stomp on a bunch of innocents. Let's go to this uh, final clip here. This is the ending. We're going to go to this in a moment. This is the ending of the clip where the general's basically been confronted. And then we'll see which one of us the United States will follow. This will be delivered at 9 o'clock tonight on all major networks. I'll be taping it in one hour. This is strong stuff, General. Are you sure? Thank you, General. General, uh, if he accuses us of sedition, whether he has the proof or not, this could be a pretty sticky business. Jordan Lyman is finished. The papers just handed me are the resignations of Generals Hardesty, Riley, and Diefenbach. The point of this treaty, and I've reiterated this on a number of occasions, is that in every true sense, we force ourselves gradually to step away from an offensive posture. We gradually move away from that... Sorry, moment. sir. Well, that moment of madness... Where to, sir? ...by accident or design, someone would push that button in the... Sir? Take me home. So basically, it all ends with he tries to launch martial law. His own generals say no. The president confronts him. He backs off. The president goes public. But what do you do when the president's been bought off by the same interest? You know, this is a movie about the military saying no to the globalist takeover. They were worried about that then. That can be turned around today. Will our military follow the globalist takeover of the Bill of Rights and Constitution? Now, in closing, before we go to this important Don Corzine interview that I think you'll enjoy, a little comic relief here, we have something serious. You know, I've done some breakdowns, and we have some video clips here of uh, what LCRA here in Austin has bought and what other police boats in New York have bought. On average, they cost fifty dollars to $100,000. That boat right there, which is a big, fancy hot rod, uh, sucked off of taxpayers and countless tickets, Cost six hundred thousand plus dollars and hundreds of thousands a year to maintain, and so all the tough guys can ride around on it all day. And now they're going to have more of these police interceptor boats out harassing on the lake, fighting Al Qaeda, uh, who's led into our country. And so I just wanted to point out that they are bankrupting uh, our nation with this, and it's going on everywhere. And Homeland Security, with your federal taxes, did pay for this, and it's another uh, boondoggle. Because I know boats, ladies and gentlemen, that's about a hundred thousand dollar boat, six hundred plus thousand dollars. Here is Darren McBreen's report on that. We're here for the unveiling of the new DPS patrol vessel. It's a 34 foot shallow water interceptor, and it's going to begin patrolling the Rio Grande River and international lakes in 2012. My name is Steve McCrum, the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety. Can you describe what the boats are, how much they cost, uh, who manufactured them? Well, the, the cost is a little under 600000 to fully equip with all the law enforcement uh, gear, the tactical equipment, the, uh, the, uh, as well as the optics on it and, uh, and the weaponry. Uh, it uh, was manufactured in Florida. These are the type of, uh, not unlike what you'd see in tactical situations that the military would employ. And they're, uh, this is the first of six that we're acquiring. We are getting five additional. Uh, in fact, we, we, today marks the first day of standing up a, a maritime tactical unit within the Texas Department of Public Safety. And there will be, as I said, five additional ones. There will be six. And uh, they'll be patrolling, the, instead of the highways, they'll be pr patrolling the, the riverways. Uh, I expect that uh, by summer we'll have them all up and running. They're all being built right now. There's two, two additional ones under, underway. And so we'll keep rolling them out as we get them and get, get the troops trained in and, uh, and tactical operations and also uh, riverine operations. We used uh, grant funds, discretionary grant funds that we had and uh, for homeland security. And we also used general revenue. The legislature, uh, in fact, were, uh, you know, directed that we use through a rider that we use some of those funds specifically for this purpose. After they had an opportunity to view some of the, our tactical operations on the border and, and some of the, uh, the, our vulnerabilities and gaps.
there are different grant programs and there's a variety of them that can be used and there are limitations in grant guidance but this is clearly uh, the way we purchase this uh, will fall within the grant guidance and how we use it again it's 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 there to, to address the full spectrum of threats whatever they are is there no end six boats at six hundred thousand dollars a piece and that's a hundred thousand dollar boat so they can harass you when you're on the lake? I mean, I won't even go on the lakes. You get harassed so much. I live in a country run by crooks where I'm treated like a criminal. And this guy means, you know, well, everything. Oh, some will be at the border fighting drug shipments. Buddy, have you not read the news? The government ships in almost all the drugs. You guys are there just there to bust anybody that doesn't get the authorization. Eight federal agencies, state agencies involved in all of it. And... I drove to work this morning and saw five state police cars giving people tickets for driving five miles over the speed limit while they let illegal aliens and everything else go. I mean, and, and let Corazon rip everybody off. It is truly unbelievable, and I, for one, have had enough of it. Now, when we have people like John Corzine, the big White House financial advisor, the former head of Goldman Sachs, stealing billions of dollars and saying, I don't know where it went and I'm not going to discuss it, and Congress is like, mm, okay. Well, thank you. We've got a serious issue. So I thought we would talk to, well, uh, the evil spirit that possesses John Corzine, Don Corleone, John Corzine, directly teleporting in from Hades, uh, orbiting uh, a, a deep space uh, galactic nebula. And uh, he joins us uh, right now, top hat and all, to explain to us um, why he's doing what he's doing. Well, it's good to talk to you. I know you're uh, proud of all of your looting and creative uh, destruction, Mr. Corzine. It's good to have you uh, here, Mr. Beelzebub or Corzine. Uh, Beelzebub, I know is the proper name. Thank you, for, uh, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's incredible. All the people are going to throw out of their houses. and We've almost shut down all the industry, and only if you're a globalist insider, we'll be able to even operate and do business, and we're setting the precedent to steal everything. Oh. Oh, I didn't realize the interview was live right now, but it doesn't matter if I got caught saying that. Just like the ATF got caught shipping all those guns into Mexico and their own memos saying they blame it on the Second Amendment. <laughs> you, nothing will be done to the Attorney General and nothing will be done to me because we've got criminals in place everywhere. And it doesn't matter if you're stolen millions out of your private accounts from MF Global. It's right under someone's nose. No one can stop us. Oh, but I'm a good person that cares. I don't know where the money is. I'm sorry. You wanted to, you wanted to interview me? I'm, I'm here now to be talked to by you. Wow, you give a new definition to the uh, name Fast Talker. Look, nobody's buying you in Congress uh, saying that you have no idea what went on and that you have no idea where the money went. Uh, so why don't you just go ahead and tell us where the money is? Oh, I spoke before the Honorable Congress, and I have $35,000 plate dinners with the Honorable Obama. And uh, just like we got away with it, as some people would say, but of course we did, we're doing God's work, as one of my counterparts said, uh, the head of Goldman Sachs. Uh, just like we were able to take 16 plus trillion and, uh, and, and transfer it to our foreign subsidiaries, uh, we're going to be able to do this as well. You think 1 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion of people's private segregated accounts of a company we took over is a big deal? It's nothing. Because, see, I am distinguished. I'm wearing a top hat, I'm wearing a suit, and I have a beard, a grandfatherly beard. And so everything is fine. Okay, we understand you're trendy and, and, and super stylish and, and hang out with all the uh, establishment criminals. But, but, but seriously, um, in fact, I've written down some questions here I want to ask you. How could you, in one year, take a profitable company like MF Global and run it into the ground and steal people's private... Um, sequestered or uh, segregated accounts under federal law uh, is a crime. How, how could you do that? Please answer the question. How could I do the great things I did at MF Global in a year? You see, you're thinking about actually building up a company. We're talking about command destruction. We're order out of chaos. We're talking about using MF Global as a globalist mafia instrument to go buy up legitimate companies with people's private bank accounts in them and then take that money and give it to our shareholders and people that are on the advisory board like Bill Clinton. That's how this works. You see, with Europe and the tens of trillions being transferred uh, by uh, the Federal Reserve private consortium uh, that Goldman Sachs and I headed up as part of, Europe is not ever meant to pay back the tens of trillions of U.S. taxpayer back money. They're meant to go deeper into debt through debt bondage. We create the derivatives fraud, and then the rest of the world 
and our operatives who run their countries sign everyone on to our debt. So uh, I didn't run the company into the ground. You don't ask a bank robber who successfully robs a bank, you know, why did he fail? He succeeded. Just because there's some dead guards and a million dollars cash missing, that's the proof of the success. We're not screwing anything up. When Congress asks us, how do we learn from this and not do this again, we're learning how much you'll put up with. And the whore media that we control. Oh, I'm sorry, I have that trending grandfatherly. The loving, reasonable media bought and paid for by our people. <laughs> the Pentagon's under our control. We're slaughtering people worldwide. We hate everybody. You think we're we just going to stop at what we've done here in the U.S.? We like a million dead Iraqis and stolen oil and trillions of dollars of new big contracts for savage killers. And you naive people will never figure it out. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm being trended right now. Oh, I don't know where the money meant. Isn't that reasonable? I was the CEO, and everybody knows we took the private accounts. It's illegal, but never mind about that. Yeah, you heard the Attorney General yesterday in testimony. They said, we have your memos where you perjured yourself about Fast and Furious, and he said, we didn't intend to lie. <laughs> We've got to get your guns before we really steal everything you've got. I'm sorry, little reporter. What else was it you had to say? You and your info warriors may be somewhat awake, but the rest of the public's brain damage from toxic fluoride and Ritalin and Prozac and guzzling alcohol and watching brainwashing television. And there's nothing they won't put up with. They love being slaves. Because I'm just a nice little grandfatherly person. Was there something else you wanted to sit on Santa's knee and ask for, Mr. Jones? Okay, well, uh, people have noticed that all over the third world, Latin America, Asia, Africa, Middle East, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, all over the world, every country you take down either has Goldman Sachs people in place, the ministers, the presidents, all of them, uh, the heads of the treasury systems, the finance ministers, are all Goldman Sachs. And we notice that then the solution you offer is only gives your own system more power when you sold the fraudulent derivatives. I mean, this is incredibly obvious that you guys are economic terrorists. I mean, who do you work for? What's going, what's going on here? What's the end game? Is there any end to the, how you are gang raping the world population and and i mean i know your whore media worships you but i mean is there any end to their groveling to your criminal activity as they destroy their own future how does goldman sachs help the world economy you're asking how, how do we how do we get control of every nation and then implode them? That's called an economic takeover. And for decades, we get our people in to the prime ministerships, the presidencies, uh, into the uh, uh, Department of uh, Treasuries or Exchequer in Greece, Iceland, you name it, Australia, Germany, France, uh, Italy. They're all Goldman Sachs alumni. You can have upwards of 70 people at a Bilderberg meeting of 130 that are Goldman Sachs. And we're, we're kind of the Darth Vader to Emperor Palpatine that's J.P. Morgan. Chase. And then and we go out and, and, and we, we, we do the thieving and the stealing and the imploding. And, and, and we call it free market when we create trillions of fake derivatives and sell them to people and then have government bail it out with taxpayer money. That's called conservative. But of course, it doesn't matter if it's Bill Clinton who helped get rid of the laws that allowed us to do this or George W. Bush or, or Obama. We buy them all. And while the public's debating liberal conservative, we are taking over everything. And that's the proof in survival of the fittest. Social Darwinism. We have the power. We were able to do this, so it's our right to do it. Kind of like Hitler said, might makes right. If I can dominate you and take you over, and you don't stop me, well, then you deserve what's happened to you. Do you understand that, little worms? American people, people of the world, you're not going to do anything to stop us, because I am a nice old man. I'm trendy. Okay, well, uh, you certainly are craven and craved, and, uh, and a mesmerized, brain-damaged population serving you. I can, I can understand how you've become quite delusional, like Caligula or some of the Aztec kings. Uh, Gary Gensler was your main minion at, at Goldman Sachs, and he headed up the CFTC. He's been missing now for a month, and uh, he, he was the guy supposedly regulating you. I mean, this is pretty obvious what you're doing. Uh, what's going on with you and Gary Gensler? What's going on... Uh, with you, I mean, I mean uh, do you guys run everything? I mean, could you barbecue children on the White House lawn? Could you, could you uh, abuse elephants at Central Park? I mean, is there nothing you couldn't do? Is there anything you won't do to us? Land of the coward, home of the slave. Oh, great satanic goblin leader. Gary Gensler. Gary Gensler. Maybe, I don't like to be asked about this. Maybe I should read a 40-page, and that's what it is. I've got a copy of it over here. Maybe I should read a 40-plus page opening statement so all the networks tune out about growing up as a child and how I'm just like everybody else. I'm just like everybody else, so you'll let down your guard. Gary Gensler was my right-hand man at Goldman Sachs selling county cities and private individuals and pensioners fraudulent paper that we knew was totally worthless, like in our Timberwolf emails where we called our customers dumb effers and, you know, said we're selling them S-H, you know what, I-T. This is a family show. I know I better not say the full thing. Uh, 
Kerry, the head of the CFTC, has disappeared the last few weeks. No one knows where he is, but the media's bought and paid for. No one will even point that out. Madoff was one of our people. He's a great guy. People got a little too much onto him. We've got to throw somebody out of the wolves occasionally. And Gensler, my right-hand man from Goldman Sachs, runs the CFTC and allowed me to do all this. It's, 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 it's really been quite, quite fabulous uh, in the final equation. Well, this is our uh, interview with the demon that uh, possesses John Corzine. Uh, he, his, his voice is sped up because something about the machinery uh, Chekhov was explaining to me causes a time distortion, so it's sped up. Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand that, but it's something to do with Einstein and uh, uh, what's happening there. Uh, but, but I wanted to show you, you know, see this, um, some funny money. We, we bought this at a store today for, I think, like $3.00. And uh, some of these are $1 bills, some are 5, some are 10s, some are 20, some are hundreds, uh, some are uh, thousands. But, you know, three bucks, you, we basically got a couple hundred thousand dollars here. And it says the play money of America, but it actually has as real, the same intrinsic value as this that says Federal Reserve Note. And you, uh, you can see where it says Federal Reserve Note uh, here up in the uh, top left-hand corner, if we can zoom in on that. You know, until uh, the Federal Reserve took over in 1913, it said, it said uh, United States Note, and it was backed by silver and gold, and later they phased that out. Kennedy tried to reissue uh, Lincoln greenbacks that had been issued. Of course, they assassinated him when he'd issued $5 billion. He was going to issue $40-plus billion. But, 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 but what is the difference between this funny money here that isn't legal tender and the fraud you issue because you weren't content to be able to control the issuance of this and buy up the world with it you, you created tens of trillions well actually thousand plus trillion uh total of uh, of fake derivatives and, and, and of course i know in zimbabwe they don't have the world's biggest note from hyperinflation 100 trillion dollars and i'll show the viewers a document cam shot of that so what's the difference between this stuff i bought at the local uh costume shop when I was getting the beard you're wearing and uh, this Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe 100 trillion and uh, this hundred dollar bill that basically is has about the same value as a five dollar bill in the 1960s or this deception dollar put out you know showing the fiat currency and exposing the new world order what is the difference between all of these can you give me some rational uh, answer in closing to how you guys have taking over government with all this fraudulent paper and just because you wear suits and top hats, it's supposedly all okay. Uh our master plan is to destroy civilization and to have a post-industrial neo-feudalistic surf system that Maury Strong, the UN, Ted Turner, Prince Philip, Prince Charles, and others have openly called for. We're going to make you pay a lot more for a lot less. We're going to shut down most of your infrastructure. We're going to shut down your farms so there's any dust. Hay is listed as a pollutant, but all of our friends that were given total waivers. We are taking over everything in a cunning white-collar fraud with armies of control freaks, socialists that are ignorant as the day is long and really believe they're going to get crumbs from our table even as they witness us destroying the society. And we control the right-wingers as well who will endorse any amount of blank checks to us and bailouts, calling it free market. We've got the whole thing figured out. That's the end game. World government openly run by the bankers, openly run by Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and the Bank of England. That's what we've got set up. Even now, we criticize you for decades and there'll be a world collapse engineered by megabanks and derivatives offering a world government new corporate global bond, which is now being set up in Europe and will spread worldwide. We'll hold you financially captive and terrorize the hell out of you, and every solution we give you only brings you deeper into our bondage. And the media and CIA operatives like Anderson Cooper will sit up there and sell out their families and everyone else, and Fox News will play along, and all of them, until we've got total control and you're totally bankrupt so the social workers can take control of your life and so you're all dependent on us. That's the end game. That's where it is. Trampling and being trampled on. A society that gets more cruel, more wicked, Beyond 1984, this is a world of psychopaths and control freaks and sickos and those that love ugliness and total crushing of innocence and destruction of beauty and genetic engineering and nuclear waste dumps. In the old years, people worried about radiation. We just have scientists raise the level and say it's safe. We're so psychopathic ourselves we live in higher radiation and don't care. It's part of being delusional and psychopathic and turned over to pure evil. It's about serving Satan, our master, bringing more destruction, more pain, more murder. And we'll see if you people rising up against us can stop us. You got that little man and that's why I came on your show for all you and your listeners. Your spirit of liberty is trash and a new world order run by pot-bellied scum like me is too powerful we've got too many steroid heads that serve us in law enforcement who love destroying america and there's nothing you can do to stop us you got that little man you got that
And I don't know where the money is. I have no idea. Who knows? We just print this garbage up and you'll sell out your own mother for it. We can issue total trillions of it. There's nothing you won't put up with. I'm done talking to you. I'm done talking to you. I'm done talking to you. There's nothing you can do to stop our new world order. Just take some Prozac. Enjoy it. Enjoy the pain. And we're gonna inoculate your children and brain damage them and triple the cancer and everything else. You got that? Good. Good. Because I'm done talking to you. Wow, well, I'm beginning to realize here that if you can't beat them, join them. I mean, this guy puts cancer viruses in the vaccines and fluoride in the water and radioactive isotopes. I mean, it's all confirmed. Maybe I was the crazy person all along. Maybe I should wear a top hat and grovel the death. I mean, just get into it. I mean, maybe this whole night's show was wrong. Maybe it's good to have monopolies cheating everybody. Maybe it's good to have tyranny. Maybe all Americans can start to wear top hats and be trendy. Maybe I've been wrong, but you know what? I actually realize I'm not wrong, and we're going to beat people like him, because that's actually, from my studying, how Corzine and the rest of these globalists operate. That's what they think about us. They think they're invincible. They think they're all powerful. They think they can intimidate everybody with all their black uniforms and crap. Let me tell you something, Corzine. Put him back on screen. We're going to kick your ass politically. We're going to wake the people up and educate them and show them all your secrets. And your days are numbered to be sucking people dry. You're going to prison. You're a financial terrorist and you will pay. You got that? So, truth is stranger than fiction. And we have uh, engaged in quite another marathon, InfoWars Nightly News. We can't even hardly get out of here because we're so dedicated to freedom. And we love freedom. And so to all the tyrants, they need to understand we're never backing off. We're never giving up. Because the spirit of liberty beats in all your hearts. We're going to beat these control freaks. They think they can arrogantly sit out there and talk about how they steal billions of people's private bank accounts and brokerage accounts and not get in trouble. They're testing you right now. And that's why, doing this little piece, I threw it in your face, just what they think about you. Let's get serious and realize these bullies aren't going to back off. It's time we stomp their ass on the ground politically and in the end fall war. Great job of the crew. Lord willing, we'll see you back Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. for the syndicated radio show and Monday for the radio show and then back here Monday night for InfoWars Nightly News where the hardest working people in the media, period, not just the patriot media, not just the real media, because we understand we're at a historical crossroads. See you tomorrow night. See you Sunday. See you Monday. God bless.